Hello dear students. Today we are going to read an important poem prescribed in your syllabus, No Men Are Foreign. It is written by James Kirkup. So before we read the text, let's know something about the poet. James Falconer Kirkup was an English poet, translator and travel writer. He wrote over 30 books, including autobiographies, novels and plays. He wrote under many pen names, including James Falconer, Aditya Jha, Jun Honda, Andrew James, etc. He became a fellow of the Royal Society of Literature in the year 1962. Let me give you a brief introduction of the poem, No Men Are Foreign. The title, No Men Are Foreign, means that no men belong to another country. The poet wants to say that all the men are same, all men are equal. He wants to promote the concept of universal brotherhood. In this poem, the poet wants to tell us that everyone in this world is same. All the people, all the men are same. They eat, live, die the same way. Everyone gets the bounties of nature like sunshine, land, etc. In equal measure, we can also say that it is a poem that promotes peace. Now let's read the text and understand it. Remember, no men are strange, no countries foreign. Beneath all uniforms, a single body breathes, like ours. The land our brothers walk upon is earth like this, in which we all shall lie. In the first line, the poet says that no men are strange and no country is foreign. So he is attempting to remove the borders from the earth which have been erected to separate different countries. Then only no country will be foreign. We will feel every country as our own land when there will be no borders. Everyone will be free to move around. The poet wants to say that the entire earth is one and all the people who live on this earth belong to one human race. Then he says that inside the uniforms worn by soldiers of different countries, the human being is the same. God has made all of us in a similar way. All breathe in the same way. Then he says that all the soldiers are our brothers. We all walk upon the same mother earth and upon our death shall lie in the grave in the same earth. They too aware of sun and air and water are fed by peaceful harvest by war's long winter starved. Their hands are ours and in their lines we read a labor not different from our own. They refers to those people who belong to other countries. We call them foreigners and discriminate them and fight with them also. The poet says that nature has given all the bounties to all the people who just like he has given to us. Everyone gets sunlight, air and water in equal measure, which means that God does not differentiate between people from different countries. We all do farming during the time of peace when there is no war. We live in a relaxed life and eat the things given to us by nature. 
further. He adds that the way we starve during wars and winter time is the same for those belonging to other countries. Even they don't get food at that time. So, he wants to say that foreigners who belong to another country and we both are same. And then, the poet says that even their hands are same as ours. They work very hard just like we do. He is giving all these examples to convey to the reader that there is no difference in us and the people belonging to another country. Remember, they have eyes like ours that wake or sleep and strength that can be worn by love. In every land is common life that all can recognize and understand. The poet asks the reader to remember something. He says that we should keep in mind that the people of another country whom we think to be our enemies have been bestowed by God with similar appearance like us. God has given them eyes like ours which open when awake and close when we are asleep. Similarly, He has given them strength which we can win through love. Then He says that in every country, in every land, there is one common thing and that is life. Life means all the things that are living and if we can recognize them and if we can understand their feelings and realize that they are like us. Then there will be no fights or wars between us. Peace will definitely prevail in the world which is actually required. Let us remember, whenever we are told to hate our brothers, it is ourselves that we shall dispossess, betray, condemn. Remember, we who take arms against each other. The poet says that we should remember that whenever someone tells us to hate a person from another country, to think him as our enemy, and then whenever we think someone to be our enemy, then we deprive ourselves. We cheat ourselves that way and we condemn ourselves. He says that we should stay away from such negativity. We should not consider everyone to be our enemy. During a war, both the parties must bear the loss. And that is why the poet says that War is not in our favor. War brings destruction. It ruins lives. He says that whenever we pick any weapon against someone, we should remember one thing. This poem is really thought-provoking poem and it makes us think that we all need to save humanity. Now we have the last stanza. It is the human art that we defile. Our hells of fire and dust outrage the innocence of air that is everywhere our own. Remember, no men are foreign and no country strange. We should keep in mind that whenever we pick weapons against any person, we make the earth dirty because weapons kill people and their bodies which fall on the earth make it dirty. Whenever war happens, what does it bring? What does it do? It leads to a lot of bloodshed, fire and death. 
are you ready to witness all that? If yes, go ahead. And if not, then we all need to think. These dead bodies accumulate on the earth and it makes it impure. The fire of war which erupts, the smoke which comes out, the dust which fills the air, it is so dirty that it pollutes and outrages the purity of the air. With all the things, the poet wants to give us a message that we should not indulge in war. Finally, he ends the poem by writing the first line in reverse and saying that remember, no men are foreign and no country strange. Then why this hatred? Then why to pollute this planet Earth? When we all are equal. So in a way, he is promoting universal brotherhood and which is the need of the hour. Now let's look at the poetic devices used in the poem. We have alliteration which means the repetition of a consonant sound into a more closely placed words. For example, body breathes. So you can see B sound has been repeated. In stanza 2, we have wars winter. So in this line, you can see W sound is repeated. So these are examples of alliteration from the poem. No men are foreign. Then we also have metaphor in the poem. Metaphor means comparison of two dissimilar things without using like or as. So it's a direct comparison. So in stanza one, we can see that uniform refers to the military of different countries. And in stanza two, we can see that war's time is compared to the winter season. So these are the examples of metaphor from the poem, no men are foreign. We can also see the use of repetition in the entire poem. Remember word is repeated five times in this poem. Remember, no men are strange, no countries foreign is repeated in stanza 1 and stanza 5 and these are examples of repetition. Then we can also see use of enjambment which means running lines of poetry from one line to the next without using any kind of punctuation to indicate a stop. For example, in stanza 1, line 2, 3 and 4 in stanza 2, line 3 and 3, stanza 3, line 1, 2 and 3, stanza 4, line 1 and 2 and in stanza 5, line 2 and 3. So these are examples of enjambment from the poem, no men are foreign. If we look at the rhyme scheme of the poem, the entire poem is written in free verse and it means there is no rhyme scheme in the poem. Now let's quickly look at the theme of the poem. The poem No Men Are Foreign is a poem by James Kirkup which states that no man is foreign or strange and we should not regard anyone as foreign or strange. The poem revolves around the idea that all men are equal. Though they are separated by boundaries, there is no difference between men of different nations. So in a way, the poet is promoting universal brotherhood through this poem. So the message of the poem is quite clear. It's that no men are strangers in this world because all people on earth are connected through their com common humanity. 
and we share a number of similarities even with our supposed enemies. So why do we have these feelings of hatred for anyone in this world? We should always stand united. So that was all about this poem. No men are foreign. I hope you all understood it well. Thanks for watching.